Today we're going to make some baseboard and some trim out of MDF. This is great because it ends up costing a lot less than what you can buy off the shelf at the big box store. And on top of that, it's customizable to whatever you want. A couple of years ago, we replaced our flooring and I took off the baseboard and the trim so I could get that flooring closer up to the edge of the wall. Now, we haven't had any molding since then, so I wanna put in new baseboard and trim and I went to the big box store, priced it out, and it was gonna be $928, which I think is pretty expensive. Pricing out how I could do it myself, and it was only gonna be $272 to buy the MDF and the primer. The reason I chose MDF for this project is because it's really, really easy to work with, and it's cheap. There are some downsides to MDF. Uh, I'm not really gonna go into them a ton. You can totally do this out of solid wood if you want but the cheapest molding at the big box store is MDF, and so I'm gonna use MDF here as well. Typically, it's gonna come in half inch and three quarter inches thick. In this case, I'm gonna be making the baseboards to be half inch thick and also the side trim, and then I also bought a sheet of three quarters, and I'll be making some transition blocks and also my headers. For this baseboard, I'm gonna go with a five inch wide. That's what I did in my previous house, and I thought it looked pretty good, so I'm gonna do it again. You can get nine of those strips out of a piece of MDF. You could do all of this with a straight edge and circular saw or a track saw and not even have to go to the table saw if you don't have that. If you can handle the whole thing, you can send it through the table saw. But in my case, it's a little hard to deal with a full sheet. So I'm gonna cut it into two pieces that I'll get four out of one and five out of the other. So I'm not cutting it perfectly in the center. I'll offset it and then I'll send those through the table saw, much easier to deal with, and I'll have nine pieces of baseboard. I got all the baseboards cut to five inches. I also cut some five inch pieces for the top of my doorways, but I did that out of the three quarter inch MDF. And I also cut a bunch of three and a quarter inch pieces that I'll use for the sides of doorways. I thought that looked good with the five inch. Three inches looked just a little bit skinny to me and I can't quite fit three and a half everywhere in my house, so three and a quarter is what I'm gonna go with. What's nice about making your own is you can customize it to whatever your eye particularly likes. You're not stuck with whatever the store is selling. I think that the baseboards are gonna look a little bit plain if it's just a straight 90. You could always come in and put a round over on there with a router bit. In my case, I'm gonna put a 45 degree chamfer on there I'm gonna use the router because it makes a really nice finish on it. You could also use the table saw if you just wanna put a 45 on there. You can also use like all sorts of fancy bits to put it on. And what I've done in the past, I did this in my old house, and I'm, but I'm not doing it here, is you can actually get crown molding bits. Freud has a set, I think there's like six of them that you can mix and match and make really wide, like five and a half inch crown molding. I did that and it costs the same as this baseboard and it worked really good, especially crown molding because no one's kicking it or things like that. If you're gonna paint it, I don't know, I think the MDF works well. For the trim pieces, I put a bevel on both sides and then for the molding, I just did that one side, worked great. Again, if you don't have a router and you're doing something simple like this, you could totally do this on the table saw, but the router leaves a really nice edge. Now I just need to sand up all these pieces, particularly on the edges and where I ran the router, and we'll be ready for paint. Now it's time to prime all the molding and trim. It is really important that you prime before you get it on the wall, which is also really what makes it sort of that equivalent of what you're gonna buy in the store. I recommend using a high quality primer that's sandable. It's a little bit more expensive, but it'll make it a lot nicer after you've primed it to sort of even everything out. A really important part and why we wanna prime this before we have it on the wall is because the edges absorb primer differently than the face. It actually absorbs a lot more primer. And so when you're putting it on, put the primer on the edge, put some on the face and then come back and then put some more on the edges. You're gonna be amazed at how much primer that the MDF is taking in. But this is important. This is good that it's doing it now instead of by the time that you go and paint it. After we have it all primed up, we just wanna do a nice light sanding. I like doing it at 220 so it just feels nice and smooth. And the paint will go on it great and then you're ready to install. You've made your molding.
hopefully this was helpful for you. Leave me a comment down below of what kind of edge profiles you've done, if you've made molding before, or if you have any questions or whatever. Also, I'm on Instagram at build it, make it. So if you make um, molding or plinth blocks or baseboard or whatever, tag me there so I can check it out. I'd love to see what you guys are able to make. Thanks so much for watching and take care.